So Trish, you've had a chance to listen to Jay Powell's press conference. You've been thinking over uh, what he said, what they did. Uh, seven rate hikes this year, four more next year. And when you look at the dots, you can see that uh, it's a uh, there, there's a much more aggressive forecast for this year. Several people are seeing 50 basis point rate hikes. What do you make of this? Uh, so, first of all, my first take on this is that it is completely appropriate. Um, as uh, Chair Powell said in the press conference and to Congress, um, with 2020 hindsight, they should have started doing this earlier. Um, so seven rate hikes by the end of the year, Frankly, that doesn't even quite get you completely to neutral. I know I, I, you're showing me the, you're showing the chart, which I know, but uh, you know, 175 to two at two percent inflation, uh, full employment, Fed funds rates probably closer to two and a half or three percent, and so um, it's one of those get going moments. Um, there's not need to panic about. Uh, inflation. Let's be clear here. Long-term inflation expectations are still pretty okay. well anchored, but of course, short-term expectations have gone up a lot. So this con uh, recession concern um, is there just sort of, you know, automatically, boy, if you're going to keep raising rates, you have to raise them enough to slow down the economy and, you know, slow down demand. Could that be cause a recession? And the chart we were just showing is, is looking yeah. at the, the peak rate next year is expected at 2.75, um, and that's above the Fed's 2.40 neutral rate. Uh, as Roberto Perley just told us, uh, former from the Division of Monetary Affairs at the Fed, empirically, that tends to open the door to recession. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, look, anytime you steadily tighten monetary policy, there is always a risk of recession. Sometimes you don't even have to get to neutral to do it. Um, and right now, frankly, the economic and political outlook is just so uncertain that I think the risk is, is higher than normal. Um, and if there are going to be more big supply shocks, which there's a distinct chance of, um, then risk of recession increases regardless, even if monetary policy slows down a bit. Um, and by the way, the FOMC clearly in their projections are completely well aware of this. If you look at the risk section, the risks are all to the upside in inflation and all on the downside about growth. But let, let me make two observations. The first is long and variable lags. Um, for the next year or so, the unemployment rate is largely determined by past monetary policy and past policy decisions, not so much about what they're starting to do now. Okay. Um, and monetary policy is pretty darn stimulative. Uh, or has been, uh, and actually still is. Secondly, a soft landing is not completely impossible, and it's the reason that the chair explained in the press conference. The excess demand for labor right now in the United States is extraordinary. The unemployment rate does not measure that. Um, so if at least some of the tightening in monetary policy simply reduces the excess demand for labor, then in fact, it might it will have an impact okay. on growth. Their GDP growth rates are down, but it might have a smaller than expected impact on the unemployment rate. Now, after your time on the heading of the system open market account and working on the markets desk of the New York Fed, I have to ask you about, ask you about balance sheet reduction. Um, Powell also said, it, it, they, first the Fed in, it said it will, in, in coming meetings, they're going to start a quantitative tightening, balance sheet reduction. Uh, and then he said it could happen as soon as May. That's the next meeting. Is it, is it needed now, Trish? Do they need to manage long-term rates a little bit and try to manage the yield curve? I, I don't think they're going to do this at, uh, to manage the yield curve. Um, but I do think it's consistent with their policy stance. They're, the FOMC has been very clear all along that the balance sheet policy is, is very much a reflection of the stance of monetary policy. They're moving more aggressively this time for very good reasons. Incredibly rapid economic growth, excess demand, and and higher inflation. So their balance sheet policy should reflect that as well. Um, I do think they're going to be very predictable, uh, but they are rightly starting earlier. But, I mean, the chair suggested May is uh, pretty heavily, um, and probably more in terms of quantity. Um, than they did last time. Now, both because these markets are bigger, their balance sheets are bigger, but they also bought a lot more. Um, and so uh, my guess is that um, they will set up a schedule that is both larger quantities of roll-off and they'll do it faster, meaning the, the, they tend to phase in okay. uh, these, uh, these, these roll-offs over time and they'll do that more quickly. They took almost a mm, year last okay. time to roll, phase them in.
And Patricia, of course, you know very well the mechanics of the Federal Reserve. In an hour or so, we are going to get more insight on that Senate Banking Committee vote. Of course, we know that Sarah Bloom Raskin withdrew from consideration for the Fed's vice chair for supervision. Tell us a little bit about how important this role is and what sort of character it needs in order to be the top watchdog for Wall Street. Uh, certainly. Um, it, it was wonderful, actually, that the Dodd-Frank added this. As uh, the Fed ha operated for many, many years without this position, they can certainly continue to do so in the short run. But the, having someone in that position who is an expert on regulation provides a certain uh, uh, an extra level of leadership um, as, as regulation is not decided by the vice chair for supervision. Uh, it's decided by the entire board. But to have a senior leader who this is one of their primary responsibilities um, is critically important. So I certainly hope they they fill it, the role fairly soon. Um, I think that um, uh, they have other governors who um, are very are expert at supervision, but um, frankly, adding more senior expertise, former regulators, of course, um, former Treasury officials have been the um, uh, have commonly been the, the the sort of individual that you would choose, um, uh, and I certainly hope that they renominate someone soon.